everyone, welcome to this Make a Medic tutorial. Today we're going to focus on the difference between subdural and extradural hemorrhages. So to begin with, let's have a recap of the anatomy of the meninges. So here we have the brain in the middle, the skull on the outside and three layers in between, which are the dura, the arachnoid and the pia. So the dura is essentially stuck onto the inside surface of the skull the pia is stuck onto the surface of the brain and the arachnoid is found in between. So an extradural, as the name suggests, is when a bleed occurs between the dura and the surface of the skull. So it classically occurs in the context of head trauma that has caused a bleed from the middle meningeal artery. So a slight anomaly in the anatomy of our skull is that we have a weak point called the terium which is essentially where a number of bones of the skull come together, and hence it creates this weak point under which the middle meningeal artery lies. So a skull fracture due to head trauma can disrupt the middle meningeal artery and cause a bleed into that extradural space. So when a CT scan is performed for patients with a suspected intracranial hemorrhage, an extradural will give rise to this convex appearance. Furthermore, as it presents acutely, the blood is likely to appear hyperdense as well. So in other words, it appears light. The classical history for someone with an extradural hemorrhage would be a clear history of some sort of head trauma, which begins with a short episode of loss of consciousness. Then they'll recover and have a lucid interval, before which they develop an ongoing headache and consciousness reduces again. A subdural hemorrhage, on the other hand, occurs due to the tearing of the bridging veins which go across the meningeal layers. They can be described as either acute or chronic and the CT appearance can give you an indication as to which one it is. So blood initially will appear hyperdense, however after it gets broken down over time it becomes hypodense. So we can first of all see that the shape of the bleed is different in the subdural because it isn't encased to the skull by the dura, it's actually between the dura and the arachnoid layer. And so it creates this crescent-shaped pattern instead of the convex pattern. Acute subdurals tend to have a clearer relationship with some sort of head trauma, whereas chronic subdurals may not have any clear head trauma at all because it can take quite a bit of time to develop and cause any symptoms but they do both tend to present relatively similarly with reduced consciousness and in severe cases that may cause a midline shift it can present with focal neurology. Mm -hmm.